Okay. The unit's called equations of lines, and we'll get to lines soon, but to be able to do lines, we first need to review some stuff. The Cartesian plane. Here, okay, this is one of those times. I'm going to be making giant effort to write as little as I can. Just what you need. Encouraging you to copy it down and look back at it, okay? Cartesian plane. Made of two axes. An X and a Y. You don't need a ruler. Just try to draw the line straight over here. Here's what, when we start say Cartesian plane, here's what we mean over here. There'll be an X and a Y axis. Points. Given as a set of coordinates, x comma y. Now, listen, that's important. Everything else I said in there is like, okay, yeah, I sort of remember that. But x comma y is an important deal. The first one's going to be the x, the second one's going to be the y. I'm going to put an arrow over here. This is how much, the x is how much you go lefty ready, and the y is how much you go upy downy. Yeah? I mean, I'm, even if you don't have a highlighter, you'll see it on my screen. Boy, that's the most important thing I said. We want the x to go across and the y to go up. Does that all ring a bell? Doesn't matter. I'm teaching it like you haven't seen it before. Brand new. How did I do? Did I keep the words to a minimum? Look at all the space I had. I could have wrote a zillion sentences on that, but I, I don't want to. I just want like, what's Cartesian plane? Boom, x and y. How do we do points? With an x comma y. And the x is over, and the y is up and down. Do you have any questions? Do you need more time? Let's jump right in and see where you're at with this, okay? We'll jump right in on the very next part is an example. It says plot the following points. We'll do the first one together. P is 3 comma 2. Can anyone describe where that will be on the plane? Um, the X. Yeah, the X. What's the X? Um, 3. 3. So we go over 3. And then um, up, two. up two. Good. Oh, I still have the highlighter on. Let me turn that off. Uh, I want to use a color that hopefully you can see at your desk. Three comma two. Well, I got the color right, but I didn't get it off of highlighter. Pink pen. Okay. Right there. It's not enough just to do the point. We'll have several points. I was about to say a lot of points. We don't have a lot of points, but we'll have several points. So you should label it. You should put the letter right beside the point there so you know which point you're talking about. Q, negative 2, 4. What am I going to do with this negative? Just go left, yeah? So negative 2 means go left instead of right. Maybe you're used to that from number lines from before. That's all the X is, by the way. It's just a number line. So we want to go negative 2 and then 4. Now does that 4 mean go up or go down? Up. The x was negative, so that meant left instead of right. But the key was positive, so we still went up. Now I can give all the quizzes back. Watch. I'll mark hers while I'm teaching because I'm just that good. Then I'll be able to hand everybody's back. See? The plan's coming together. 
<clears throat> Where's R? Daniel, tell me. Yes? So where do I go? Um, left, left, down. Left, how many? Um, two. And then? Down? By one. Beauty. R. Label them each time, please. Very important for some of the stuff we'll do later. Sometimes I say this is going to get out of hand. I, I don't think it is going to get out of hand. This is, this is pretty much what we're up to today. This and one other thing. T. Five, negative three. Somebody other than Daniel. Joe? Um, to the right five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Down. Down three. And there's the final point. How is it? Is it OK? Yeah. yeah? We're going to do a lot of that this chapter, a lot of those grabbing points. We had to make sure we had that down pat. OK. The only other idea I got today, I got some details. But the only other big idea I've got today is? Slope. Yay. I've got a great sentence for you. Slope is easy and fun just remember Rise over run. Anybody see what I'm doing there? I'm up to something there. I'm looking behind you. I got a poster in my room. Look. I mean, I'd like you to memorize that, but I never want you to forget it. So if you're ever on a quiz or a test, you can just turn around and go, what is it again? And slope is rise over run. But I want to deal with that right away. Why is it rise divided by run? Well, let me ask you a question. Let's say I offered you a job this weekend, babysitting my children. They're 8 and 11. No. Okay. Daniel Mee says no. I can do that. And I offered to pay you $40. That would be the rise. That would be how much your bank account's going to go up, $40. Wouldn't there be another question you should ask? What would you immediately ask me if I said, hey, will you babysit my kids this weekend? For forty dollars, Gwen, what would you ask me? How long? How long? Yeah, because if I say forty dollars, and you got to watch for an hour on Friday while I cook dinner, you'd be like, "That sounds great, forty bucks for an hour." But if I say forty dollars, and it's all weekend while I go to Niagara Falls for sixty hours, you're gonna be like, "No, thank you." That's why I rise over run. How much is it going up? But then, how long is this gonna take too? Yeah. I'll ask you a different question. Soon ski season will open. Maybe not that soon. But let's say there was a, a hill that was 100 meters high. Are you scared? No, there's another question you should ask. How long is it going to take to get down this hill? Because if it's 100 meters high and you come all the way down the hill in one meter, you're going to need a parachute. Yeah. But if it's 100 meters high, but it's 400 meters long, you might not even glide. You might have to push a little. Yeah, That's why rise over run. We care how high, but also how far. Slope is easy and fun. Just remember rise over run. Here it is. Here's slope in a nutshell. If it was difficult last year. Maybe it's going to click in right now. I'm just going to make, I'm going to graph two points. I'm going to, add, well, I'm going to test this and see if anybody can label them. And then we're going to find the rise of run. Okay, so I'm going to choose this point here. And I'm going to choose this point here. Is it close enough you can see what, what, what coordinates I've chosen? So if you need help, can anyone see close enough to see what point I've selected there? It's over to 8. What? 
It's only eight over. Maybe you can't see that from your desk. And then it's seven up, which sounds pretty good right now. A seven up. How about this one? How much left or right is it? Can you see? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to write down something that's incorrect here. You get ready to correct me, okay? So that's a five. And then up two. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Favor? Negative five. Okay. Now, if you know something awesome about slope, and I don't use it here, I know, that's tomorrow. Okay, so if you know something awesome about how to find slopes, that's fine. We'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to teach the easy way of slope, like the easy, easy way. Here's how you do rise and run. Draw a triangle. Did you draw a triangle last year? So I'm going to, let's pretend this is like a ski slope. I think my kids want to learn to ski this year. I probably haven't skied in Might be 23 years, 24 years, no, 26 years. To see if I still got it. I was not a great skier, but I could ski. Draw a perfect right angle triangle underneath. By perfect, I mean right along the line there. If you don't have a ruler, that's okay. Just get it straight along there, because this solves all my rise and run problems. I just count the rise and the run. It rises one, two, three, four, five squares. I only wrote squares because anyone who maybe had trouble with rise or run last year, maybe they didn't realize you're counting how many squares. Counting the squares. Okay. What about the run? How many, how, does, how many does it run? How many squares? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Hey, that didn't go very well. Thirteen squares. Slope equals slope is easy and fun. Just remember. Rise or run. What's the rise? Five. What's the run? 13. And it comes out to a fraction, but I don't think the fractions are going to cause you a big problem. The only way we have to use the fraction here is maybe we have to reduce it. And we just got to read off the rise and run. So if, if fractions are not your deal, I don't think it's going to be a big problem here. I, I know teachers say stuff like that all the time. But I, I really believe it. I really believe that just because this is a fraction, it's not going to cause you fraction trouble. Does this ring a bell? If it doesn't, I've tried to teach it like, well, we never we don't remember it at all. Well, that's what slope's all about. Okay, that was the review, the stuff we needed from grade nine. Now we move on to grade 10. What kind of stuff are we going to do with this, these ideas? Here we go. Sarah earns $6 babysitting for two hours. Nobody babysits for this price anymore. This example was typed up by me when I was first a teacher. 24 years ago, and back then $3 an hour wasn't bad for babysitting. Would you babysit for $3 an hour now? No. No. So it's an outdated example, but it actually works out good with the numbers, so I didn't change the numbers. Okay, Sarah earns $6 an hour for babysitting two hours. Suppose she has paid the same rate for any time she works. Complete the table and graph the relation on the groove. Okay, if she works zero hours, how much does she get paid? Zero. She's not going to get anything if she works zero hours. It said she works six, for two hours she gets six dollars. So if she only works one hour, how much is she going to get paid? Three. That may be easy. And I, I select the numbers carefully. Not just because it was an old example, because they're, it's nice to think about. But what did you really do there? And I wrote down the wrong number there. What did you do to figure out the three? 
Split it in half. You actually did rise over run. You went, oh, rise equals 6, run equals 2. Maybe you didn't think about it that way. You didn't make it that complicated. But that's all that's going on. So she said, oh, then my rate is the rise over the run. That's why we do rise over run, which is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Probably you didn't have to think about all this stuff. You just went, oh, it's 3. But that's what's going on. That's why we do rise and run. So then, which of these number of hours is next easiest to fill in? I don't actually know the answer. Which one would you fill in next? She, she jumps right to four. To her, jumping right to four hours is the easiest now. Six dollars for two hours, twelve dollars for four hours. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, then what's the one in between? Nine, because we figured out that each time she does an hour, she gets three dollars. Will you put that along the side? We're going to use those later. Not today, but just put them in there. That's like, oh, it's going up by three every time. So, it says graph it. Now, I, oh, yours printed out really good, didn't it? You can't really see those lines on mine, so I'm going to go over them because it, it doesn't look too great on mine. But on your sheet, when I, when I look at your photocopy sheet, I think they did come out pretty good. Right? You, got, you can see that line right there pretty good, and that line there pretty good. Am I right? You can see those okay? So we're going to put along here number of hours. And along the side, we're going to put money earned. You don't have to write it sideways if you don't like. I think I just do that because I think it's fun. I just like turning my head sideways and writing money earned. Maybe you'd like to turn your paper sideways and do it. Turn your binder sideways. But, or you could just write it and fit it in. It just seems to fit in nicer when you do that. Okay. So, in a second, I'm going to need someone clever. Along here, I'm putting one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, eleven hours. I went one hour on each line. That made no more sense to me. What would you like to put along the side? Do you want to go by ones on the y-axis or did you want to use something different? Ones will go all the way up to 13. She likes ones. I'll go ahead and use ones. That's what she liked. But you could use twos or threes or fours, whatever you wanted, depending on what you're trying to do here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And now, just to remain colorful, we'll graph all those points for zero hours. She makes zero dollars. One hour, three dollars. Two hours, six dollars. Three hours, nine dollars. Four hours, twelve dollars. It says draw a line through the points using a ruler. Okay, friends, I, I got rulers. So all through this chapter, whenever you need one, you just come and get some from the pile here, okay? Some of them are in little packages. Mrs. Todd loves the little packages. I don't know why, but she's a weirdo. So if you do get a package at the end of class, can you put it back in the package? It's a little crazy, but hey, she's a little crazy. You can carefully draw a lot. Can you get in the game, please? It's funny. It's funny, Daniel. When I'm recording like this, I have to be careful what I say. I don't want to be on the video forever. That's why I have to do stuff like... Because I know one of the videos what happened. 
<laughs> Evans, Evans, like, Evans, like, what? What? Are you, how did I get thrown under the bus here? He says. I did the line in black. You don't have to do it in different colors. I just do that. And I, I hope it makes you, that you can see a little bit better what I did. I got to tell you, it's a lot of the chapter in a nutshell right there. We got some details. Some, some, some are a little bit difficult, the details we got to work out. But that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to figure out a situation and we're going to graph the line that describes the situation. Okay? And then we got some questions to answer, so we need someone clever to help us answer. Oh, there's only two questions. First question, what happens to Sarah's earnings when the number of hours increases by one? How much does her earnings go up for every hour? Ten. Not 10, no. Three. Three. Sorry, for this one, yes. Three. 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 Dollars? And I'll add one more word. Three dollar increase. Could we do situations with decreasing? Yes. Yes. Who's the money decreasing for? Whoever's kid she's babysitting. They're paying out three dollars, so their money's going down, right? So we could talk about that too. That's not what this example is. Draw a staircase. What do you mean by staircase? Okay, do this. Really? See? See? Little staircase deal here. Just like the triangles I built in the previous spot. And how does this staircase illustrate your answer? When you go over one, you go up three. That's the rise and the run. Okay. We got finish this front page. And then there's a back page. The other stuff is homework. So if you're trying to jump ahead, the homework is 1.1.3 and 1.1.4. The lesson is 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. Okay. Do you have any questions here, Daniel? Sure. You're not going? Is he going? Did that give you enough time? On to the next page we go. One stair produces two measurements, a rise and a run. This is the rise, this is the run, great picture. And slope is rise over run. Good page. Good page to look back at when you're doing your homework. It's got all the stuff right there. These two measurements written as a ratio determine the slope or the steepness of the line. If you were Sarah, would you want this pay scale to be steeper or flatter? Would you want it to be steeper or flatter? Which one's better if you're Sarah? Steeper, why? It's perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me write down, try and write exactly what she said. I won't even change the word. Steeper. Because that means she makes more money working 
less hours. Did I write down just what you said? No. Oh, did I change no, what? It wasn't me. Oh. No, you didn't. She said that you missed a word. What, what word did I miss? Oh. I think that's pretty close to what you said, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. she makes more money working less hours. We want, that's what we want when we're, when we're working, right? Lots of rise, as little run as possible, and that'll make things really steep. For you ski people, you want the best skiing of the day, the wildest ride. You want lots of rise, not much run. You're a little more scared, well, you want less rise, yeah? Okay, it's good. It's good stuff and really important. If you're finding it easy, please know, even though it might be easy, it's really important. We really need this stuff. Like it's, it's like vital to what we're going to be doing next. Do you need more time there? All right. What is slope? This is the practice for the homework right here. On a Cartesian coordinate system, plot and label the following points. 2, 3, 4, 10, negative 5, 7, 4, negative 6. You try it. Let's not wait around until the homework time to find out you're not sure how to graph these. Draw and label these, and then draw the following lines. Hook up A to B, A to C, B to C, and C to D. Okay? Then we'll do the slope together. We'll do it in two parts. Try graphing them and doing the lines, and then we'll take that up in just a minute. Unless you think that's the easiest thing ever. Then you could probably skip ahead, but... Okay, okay, okay. Oh, thank you. Carter's here, Evan's here, Daniel's here, Favor's here, David's here, Xavier, Jaden. Very good. Quiz folder. All right, we are ready. Okay, did you have enough time to graph the points and do the lines? Let's check to see how you did. Two, three, right there. A is good. Four, ten, four, ten, right there. That's B. Did you label them? A's, little B's, yeah? Negative five, seven, over here. C and D, four, negative six, down there. How'd it go? That's good? Okay. We're in wonderful shape. We can graph the points. The rest of it should be pretty good. Now, the other thing I asked you to do was connect those. Make the line AB. So AB was here. 
AC was that one. BC was that one. And CD was that one. Were you able to connect them up OK? What's up? A is not there. Thank you. Eraser. A was here. Two, three. Good catch. I don't know what I was doing. I went to sleep there for a second. Now draw all the lines. Yeah. A, B. A, C. B, C. And C, D. OK, I did that. Drew all the lines. Then it says calculate the slope of each line. We'll do A, B together. Then I'll get you to try two of them on your own. And then we'll do the last one together. A, B, here's what I want you to do. When you've got a line like that, make the triangle. Like that. And then you can just count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, slope is seven over two. Rise over run. You try and do AC and BC, and then we'll do CD together. Draw the triangles. It's going to get sort of messed up, but we'll just battle through it, okay? That's not what I came for. I came to look and see that. OK. It's good. All is well. Joe. Um, I know you got a calculator can reduce fractions, but I don't know. Use that button there. Yeah, that's, that makes a fraction. So if, let's say, you want to do 5 fraction 10, mm -hmm. it equals, it'll reduce fraction for you. It puts it into mixed form, but if it's still 3 on the bottom, then it doesn't reduce. So 19 over 3 doesn't reduce. Oh, so that's 6 and 1 third. Okay. Interesting how it displays it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's take a look. AC. To do AC, you should have had this triangle here. And I, if I count the squares, I get 4 and 7. So slope 4 sevenths. There's something wrong with that, and I hope someone out there can fix it in just a second. I'm just going to recount them. One, two, three, four. AC, right? AC. AC. Four, seven. Something's wrong. What is it? Seven over four. No, rise is right. Rise is four. Run is seven. That part I got right. Four over seven. Why? Right, so rise is first. Rise goes on the top. Yeah, it's okay. That's why, that's why we're going after this. Rise on the top, run on the bottom. You're right, when we do X and Y, runs, runs the, the first one and rises the second. But in, in this, rise is on the top. Yeah, good. Um, but there's still something wrong. Would you want to be paid like this? Look at this. What's happening? going down. We call this negative. Ms. Ty, you haven't taught that yet today. I know. I just threw it in there, and then I'm going to talk about it in just a second. But when they're going down like that, we call it negative. Uh, BC. Hard to see on here. Oh, I'm going to put the triangle up here. Three squares up, three, six, nine squares over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three over nine. That is a positive slope, 
but can you do a little better than 3 over 9? This is the only part of fractions we need. It reduces to 1 third, because both the top and the bottom will divide by 3. What's the problem? Last one. We'll do it together, okay? I'm going to switch to another color because I can barely see anymore. It's getting all messed up in there. I'll switch to color. Maybe black will actually show up pretty good. There. Rise. Count the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is the rise. 3, 6, 9 is the run. 3, 6, 9. 13 over 9. But what? It's a negative because this one's going downwards. But that's a little tiny bit confusing. So I better make a sentence just to be clear. Most of the sentence is there. We're going to fill it in for you. Do you need more time on that part before I switch pages? Okay, we're almost done. If a line slants upward, left, or right, it has positive slope. If a line slants downward from left to right, it has negative slope. I'm barely able to fit that in. Let me see. Negative. Okay. So. Draw three examples of positive slope and three examples of negative slope. I'm going to do my positives in red, okay? Here's positive slope coming at you right now. Positive slope. Positive slope. Positive slope. Positive slope. And in black, I'm going to label those. Those are all positive slope. I'm just going to put a positive sign beside them. How, Xavier, yeah, how would I draw something with negative slope? How am I going to change it so that we get negative slopes? These ones are positive. They're going this way. How does it change if we want negative slope? Yeah, I go this way. So something like, there's one that goes downwards. There's downwards, and then I'll make one that's barely downwards, but like that. Those ones are all negative slopes. I put little negative sides beside them. Okay? Oh, that's it. I'm all done. Still have 25 minutes. Here's what I want you to do. 1.1.3, finding slopes. Just draw the little, I made them nicer to, to be, there's space there. You can draw the little rectangles on, count the squares, do rise over run, then do it with regular ramps, pretty straightforward, pretty fast actually, that should go quick, and then do it with points, where you gotta grab some points, okay? And I'll check it all tomorrow. Yeah? I'll put an answer sheet up here. So when you come in, you can check to make sure you got the answers. This? I'll stop the video. You have the rest of the time to finish those two sheets for homework.